Hey guys, welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast. My name is Elizabeth Savillon, and on today's episode, we'll be talking about embracing the marks of loss and grief and the whole process that it goes into the grieving process. So I really hope on today's episode, you get something from it, and I'm excited for today's guest. So let's get right into it. Welcome back to Beauty Marks Podcast. Today I have a special guest, my pastor, Pastor Liz Vasquez. I've actually known her for years now since youth group. So hi, Liz. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm so thankful that you are being a part of this. Um, For those that don't know you, like, can you say a little bit about yourself, what you're passionate about? Yes, my name is Liz. My husband, JJ, and I are pastors here in Winter Park, Florida. Uh, We've been pastoring for about four years. I know Elizabeth from when we were youth pastors. um, And then God called us to start our own church here in Winter Park. And um, so that's about me. What I'm passionate about is I love just connecting people to God. Um, I was radically changed. My life was radically changed when um, someone led me to Christ. And so my life goal and my passion is just to connect other people to Christ as well. Um, And so I'm just proud to say that we um, started this church about four years ago and so many people's lives have been changed through this church. And we love to hear all these stories of people who decided to not have a divorce and people who uh, were thinking about committing suicide. They decided not to find true purpose um, in their in their lives. I'm also passionate about my two kids, um, Justice and Zane. I homeschool them. One is seven, the other one is eight. I have to think about it. They have a birthday every year, so I have to remember. That's so every true. Year. <laughs> How do you manage that, by the way? Homeschooling during yeah, being homeschooling home. is crazy. It's super crazy, but it's good. I mean, I it, it was hard at first teaching them how to read was a big deal. Um, but now they're doing better. They're actually in virtual school now. So everything is good with that. I'm passionate about that as well. Just being able to teach my own kids is a big deal. Um, and so, yeah, that is all about me. Love it. Honestly, I, I love the relationship that over the years I have had with like Liz. I feel like she's just very down to earth and like she's just someone that you can learn so much about from thrifting oh, to like b- the Bible, kids, like everything. <laughs> like I feel like you like know everything. <laughs> So, um, no, so I'm excited for today's conversation because you brought up something that like, um, you know, your life was radically changed, but in your life, there has been a lot of also, you know, challenges that you have faced and one that even kind of brought you to even starting the church and all of that. So I would love for you to get into the story of your journey. Yes. And so... My journey, it's funny because we, when we started the church, we had a different name for the church, but then we decided to call it Journey. And the reason why we decided to call it Journey, that's actually um, how like our story began is because, um, so I'm trying to make a super long story short and really just focus on one of the main details because I could talk a lot. Um, so we basically got pregnant, um, it was in 20. Oh my gosh, I don't remember. I think it was 2014. And then um, soon, like months after, we decided to uh, start a church. And 20 weeks, on my 20 week, 20 week I'm sorry, um, appointment, um, I, like, like I said, I have Justice and Zane, two boys, healthy, everything's fine with them. And I had them before um, I got pregnant this third time. So when I went to the doctor for my 20 week appointment, thinking I was just going to go in for them to tell me whether I was having a boy or a girl, which at that time, obviously I'm hoping for a girl because I had two boys and that's all I'm thinking I'm going in the office for. And then um, the girl who was doing the sonogram, she looked like nervous. And next thing you know, the doctor was calling me into the office to sit down and my husband and I are thinking, what is going on? And next thing you know, um, they find out we had to go to specialists and they found out that, um, our child had enlarged lungs, um, he or heart, I'm sorry, enlarged heart. They couldn't see his lungs. Um, and I didn't have a lot of amniotic fluid, so they really couldn't see a lot of what was going on. But basically, um, they told me that he was going to pass away soon, that he wasn't going to live, um, that he just didn't develop and form properly in my womb. And so we really had a hard time with that. It just so happens, too, that 
that week after that appointment, we were supposed to start the process of training to start the church. So we were gonna go to a church planning event. Um, and I remember my husband looking at me and saying in the car, are you wanting to still go to this church planning event? You know, I, do you wanna like grieve because they're telling you that, that your son is probably gonna die soon? And oh, actually we also found out it was another boy. Um, but that he's going to die soon. And I'm like, no, I feel like the devil is really like attacking us right now because we decided to start this church. And the only way I know how to like fight him back and punch him in the face is to like, still keep going what we were supposed to do. So we went ahead and went to the church planning event. And um, so many times I would go to specialists. So I ended up having to go to the doctor every week after week after that because they wanted to monitor what was going on. And straight from the beginning, they told me right away that um, you might as well just abort him because he's not going to live. And every time I would go to the doctor every week, they would tell me the same thing. We can't see a lot because you don't have a lot of amniotic fluid, which is basically the fluid in your womb that you need for them to see what's going on in the sonogram. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that he's just not going to live. He's not going to be okay. Um, so many tests, so many sonograms, and every week the same thing. You might as well abort him. And I've just felt like, there's no point in doing that because they told me at that point that he was not going to live for another month and still time would pass. Months would pass, weeks would pass and he was still alive. And I thought to myself, how am I going to abort a child who is obviously fighting for his own life? Like I want to give him a chance and I'm not, not going to do that. And so finally they stopped telling me that. Um, and fast forward to, the day we had him, which was uh, about, they scheduled a C-section about two weeks before my actual due date. Um, and so it was really crazy the day to even think about it because all the while I'm praying, God, just whatever's going on with my son, please just heal him. Um, and I remember um, just feeling like, God, if you don't do this, then I feel like, like you're almost like if you're not real, because if you really why would you even give me a child <laughs> to just take him away? Not even so much that you're not real, but why are you allowing this in my life? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Why, why are you going to give a child to someone to then make them go through this whole process and then take them away? And so, because that's how I felt. And then I had a whole, a hard time the whole time, just even trying to figure out, like, when you have a child, you don't wait till your child is born to love them. You love them when they're in your womb. And I remember all my emotions because I'm like, I want to love this child, but it's like loving somebody knowing that they might not be there. They might just leave. And so fast forward to the day we had him, I had a C-section. And as soon as they took him out right away, they confirmed everything that they saw in the sonogram is that he had an enlarged heart. His lungs weren't formed. He had no kidneys. And so the list just went on and on of all the things they found wrong with him. Um, and they put him on a respirator and they told us that on the respirator, they had to put him on a respirator because he couldn't breathe on his own. And they told us that he'll probably last another, you know, seven, eight hours on the respirator. And then after that, you know, he's, he, he's not going to live. And so we took the time that we could with him and those eight hours that we had with him after um, I gave birth to him, we sang worship songs with him or my whole family was there in the room. We loved on him and then we watched him go. Um, and that was a super difficult process. But going back to um, when we started the church, why we decided to call it Journey was because it was this idea that God could take something that's just so gut-wrenching, <laughs> something that's just so difficult to go through and make something beautiful out of it because there were so many beautiful things that came out of it. Um, and I remember one of the things that I realized was that God really loved us and that we were, that's another reason why we're so passionate about church is because at the time um, we had so many church family members and friends who were praying for us that remember how I said that I used to go to the doctor almost every week. JJ, my husband couldn't come with me every week. I, I didn't have family members that can be with me every week. And I remember times that I would go into the doctor's office alone and I wouldn't feel alone because there were so many people praying for me that I literally felt like that entourage of people that were praying with me were in that doctor's room with me. And I felt so much peace that even though I was getting bad news week after week, I, I wasn't alone in the process. And so 
that is basically our story of everything that had happened and why we decided to name the church Journey Church because he just took something that was so sad um, and something that other people could see as like terrible and he made something beautiful out of it because so many good things came out of it. Wow. Wow. Honestly, every time you share the story, no matter what, it always just hits my heart. <laughs> it's <laughs> emotional because it's something that like, I don't think I am not a parent yet, but I can't imagine. And I know that everyone will look at you and be like, this is so strong though. Like, how are you continuing? How are you smiling? How are you going through the whole process? So I want to go back to the story real quick of when you, the day that he was born in that moment, were you like, how was how were you, were you already prepared for him not to make it? And then what was your reaction or what, how did, were you that day? Like, were you in disbelief or all of that? So I think it helped that, um, it, I, I know I've seen people go through grief where, especially having a child where I think there was a celebrity that recently had a child and her child, Chrissy. Chrissy. yeah, she didn't know that her child was going to die. You know, so at least for me, that what helped was that I had all that time to process it. Um, and at first I thought I would rather just like, you know, it just happened. But when I think about it, I had that whole time to process it. So I think that whole time I when I first found out that he was sick, I thought, well, he might just go. But it, it's hard because you're trying to balance between God. I believe that you can heal my child because you've done it before for other people at the same time knowing okay but even if you don't like i still believe in you and so i think that putting that in my head and knowing that and praying that every day the day that i had him it was like either way god i'm gonna trust you whatever you have for me i'm gonna trust you so if it's you're giving me a child that's gonna be perfectly healthy or you're giving me a child that um they tell me he's like they said he's not gonna live but he is gonna live and we're just gonna have a child who might be sick and we have to take care of or he's gonna be so sick he's gonna die and so it was just like knowing going into it knowing that there are different possibilities that was the scary thing when you have a healthy child you know i'm gonna have this child and most likely he or she's gonna come out okay but we went into it knowing there's three different possibilities and we have to be okay with either one and so that was my thought process throughout the whole thing so that when i found out that he was not going to be okay obviously that's when the grieving started that you know that time yeah and how was that process for you it was super difficult um i think i know one of the questions you had asked who was like i think that works really good together um is do you feel like grief has a timeline so I feel like that's just one whole question. What's the process? Does it have a timeline? It, like I said before, it was really hard to fall in love with him because I didn't know if he was going to stay or leave. Um, but I feel like what I've learned through this whole process, and I remember my husband, JJ, kept telling me um, when we came back home after the hospital, I'm the kind of person that I'm just like, all right, we need to like go through this and be done like I got stuff to do I don't have time to be like <laughs> crying okay. like I need to get back I need to focus on what's important right now I don't have time for this like that's the kind of person I am like I'm like I'm really like tough on myself sometimes like I'm the kind of person at the gym I'm like all right no we got to do all of our sets like we're not we're not gonna we're skip not leaving yet. no we're not leaving until we get this done that's why my husband likes me to go to the gym with him because I'm like no you did what no finish it like and that's the kind of person I am. So I remember one day he sat me down and he was like, you have to like not. It's basically the, the way I think about it is that grief is a process. Um, it could be considered a timeline, but it's a timeline that has no end. So don't think that one day I'm going to be over this because I don't think that I will never be over it. I lost my son. Like that's a big deal. Now it's, it has no end, but you will always have grief. It's just different every day, meaning like over time it's different. So maybe when it first happened, I cried every so many hours, I would say. <laughs> like when I got home, every couple of hours I was crying. And then that over time, I couldn't tell you exactly how long, but over time that changed into just once a day, which changed into once a week, once a month, you know. Now at, I'm now I'm at the point it's been how long has it been? Five years that 
it's not every day anymore. It's not, you know, and that doesn't mean that I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but it's every birthday, every, every time it's his birthday, um, every time I see a, a, the video, we have like a, a, like a five second video of him that JJ recorded um, as soon as he came out of the womb where he didn't have any tubes or anything on him. It was just him and you saw his face and you saw him trying to breathe so hard without really having lungs. And so that video gets me every time. So on his birthday, when I watch that video, mm -hmm. and then there's times when maybe my youngest, because he never had a younger brother, you know, that he can actually physically be here with. So sometimes they'll say, I can't wait to go to heaven and see my younger brother. That gets me, you know? So like there's triggers, but I believe that, um, I, I just feel like you can't think to yourself, like, I'm just going to have to get over this and that's it. Like it's, there's, there's no end to it. It's just a process it's that you have to go through that it's best to go through with family and friends that are praying with you. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically, I think that's the biggest piece of advice that I got was basically from my husband. Like, don't, don't, don't try to, don't try to push the process and make it happen faster because then you don't really get to process everything. Like that's why it's called a process because mm -hmm. you have to process what's happening. And so don't try to skip that because it's going to come out when you're at work or you're with your family or, you know, you just, your emotions are going to just come out of nowhere <laughs> because you didn't take time to go through the process. And I think one time I even posted on his birthday this past year um because every year i'm like i think every year i would get surprised that i would wake up sad mm -hmm. and i'm like i should be over this by now and then i realized no i need to go through it every year i don't want to forget him and what i learned from it so i just need to go through it and so every year when i on his birthday when i wake up i'm like all right so i'm gonna cry that's fine and now we purposefully watch that five second video Mm. And we share with each other and we talk about what we've learned and we go through it again. And that's okay. Cause I never want to forget. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what are things that you have learned from this? Cause I know that your, your process was different and it's still like how you said, like you don't ever, yeah. ever forget it. Yeah. What are things that you always have in mind about like what that has taught you or what you have yeah. gone through from that? So I think the biggest, the biggest lesson I would learn from this, especially because we're going through things like COVID, mm -hmm. um, this past, so his birthday is on July. And so he, I, every year I have to um, remind myself all the things that I've learned through the process. And I think the biggest thing, like I said, because of COVID this year, it really helped me a lot. Every time I'm going to go through something really difficult or I am going through something difficult, like I remember, you know what? I went through the loss of a child. I think I can get through A, B, and C. I can get through COVID or whatever. And the way I think about it is um, I, um, to share like a quick story to, for it to make sense because I, I feel like people who have not gone through this, maybe they don't get it. But I, um, I don't like, I, I like running now, but I didn't like running before. I hated it in high school. In middle school, I sucked at it so bad. But I became friends with um, another pastor in the church, uh, Pastor Jenny. She loves running. Mm -hmm. And so one day she was like, let's go running. She took me on a two and a half mile run. Like I never even run. <laughs> she took me on a two and a half mile run. We do this once a week. Mm -hmm. But because I was with her, we, we got through it. I didn't even know that I was running two and a half miles because I was with her. Um, fine. So we used to do that once a week where it got to a point where she couldn't do it anymore. Um, because she, um, we would go super early in the morning, but then her, that's when she was homeschooling her girls. Long story short, they had to start going to school. We couldn't do it anymore. I'm like, but I want to keep running. So I came home, I was home. And one day I'm like, I need to go on a, on a run. And I'm like, my neighborhood is one mile. I'm going to go one mile in the middle of that run. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this mile run. But then I had to keep telling myself, no, I ran two and a half miles. Mm -hmm. If I can run two and a half miles, <laughs> I can run one mile. I can yes. do this. I can do this on my own. I can do this. And that's exactly what it's like. It's like I, the biggest thing I've learned from all of this is that whenever I have something that's really hard, I could do it. You know, like I could, I can get through this. And so I, I know that it's difficult. I, I know I was thinking about it today, even before we, 
we got together for this. Just, it really helps me, even in the little things, like when it comes to homeschooling my kids, I have such a hard time, they get frustrated. I'm like, I got through the loss of a child and I'm fine, I could get through this. And the same thing goes for my husband. Um, recently, he had to preach to like, like 10,000 kids mm. at this convention, at this youth convention. And he says, whenever he feels like, whenever he has to do things like that, and he feels like it's massive, and I don't know if I could do this, he takes out that little five second clip that I was telling you about, mm -hmm. and he watches it and he reminds himself, like, I got through this, I could do this. Like, this is not a big deal. It yeah. makes everything else so small. And so I think that for me has been the biggest thing that whenever a situation comes up that I feel like I can't get through, I remember what God has gotten me through before. Mm. And that reminds me, like, I can get through this again. Yeah, that's so good. Wow. I mean, there's like a long <laughs> list. I appreciate my kids because I was, <laughs> you know, like I did not maybe appreciate them before how it's not that easy to have like healthy kids and they're good mm -hmm. boys. And so now I hug them a lot. You know, every year their birthdays, it's like a big deal because I'm like, mm -hmm. I got another year with them. That's not always guaranteed. Yeah. Um, I appreciate my family, my husband, my church family, everyone who prays for us, everybody. I just appreciate people. Any, any amount of time that I can have with somebody, I'm like, I appreciate that because you never know what could happen. I appreciate my parents, just everybody. It's huge. It's such a big deal. Um, I appreciate life, period, and God and how he can get me through anything. I don't think I realize that so much, how like God can really get me through anything. And so because I was able to go through that now, I'm like, I can do anything. Yeah. With his help, obviously. Is that, um, do you feel like with your faith, like in God is what really got you through? Cause I know you had people praying for you, but like, how was that? Like, were you, what were things that you did to get to where you are now? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, I say it all the time. I'm like, I don't know how anybody can get through this without God. Like just, I don't know how many times I just, I played worship music like all day, every day. I remember the day before the, we had him and I was blow drying my hair because I thought I'm not going to be able to wash my hair for a while. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there blow drying my hair and all the while I'm playing worship music. I feel like every single song was to me. Like I remember that song, mm -hmm. It Is Well. It was a big deal at the time. It Is Well mm -hmm. with my soul. I'm like singing, it is well, like crying yeah. at home. Like that really helped me every day just sing his presence. There were so many songs from Stephanie Red Singer that I would just sit on the couch and cry. And I felt mm -hmm. God's presence just, and it was something I had to do every day. Like God, give me peace, give me strength every day. And every day I would start my day out with some worship and I would pray. And God would give me the strength because I thought to myself, when I was grieving, I thought to myself, I just got to get through this day, one day at a time. And so that was basically what I did. Also, just being around people who were just so encouraging, mm -hmm. um, having my church family who was always praying for me um, or for us um, was a big deal. And then family, really family got me through it. Like, especially my, my kids, because kids, they don't, they don't know what's going on. So they're just mm -hmm. happy. So like, I looked at them and said, they're so happy. Why should I shouldn't be sad? Like, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, and so they would make me happy. And that really got me through it. But definitely my faith in God, just knowing that, you know, he he allowed this to happen in my life. So he's going to help me through it. And that's what I always say, like, if he allowed it, like, I'm in his will, I'm in his plans, like, I'm following everything that God's asking me to do. So if he allowed this to happen in my life and he's going to get me through it. And so I think that was a really big deal knowing mm -hmm. like, again, going back to like the, the, the running, like I've been through situations before and God has got me through it even before that. And I'm like, God can get me through this too. Mm -hmm. I know he can. I think something that is interesting with what you said as like your own faith in God as a pastor, right? And like your own kind of not doubt in like that you don't believe in him, but like the hope that he will heal, but that didn't happen. I know many people that I know that have had that happen, that something that they prayed for didn't come to pass or something. What do you, what advice or has, what would you say to someone that has, that happened that maybe has caused them to doubt in their own faith in God? Yeah. 
Yeah, I understand that completely. I think that's a big deal because I remember, like I think I said before, actually, I remember the day I found out that he was sick. I remember calling my sister, um, my older sister, because she is also a pastor. And I, I asked her, I said, Lisa, why would God give me this child to then take him away? Like, why? The only way I understand him doing this, if he would give him to me so that the child can be healed and everybody can like mm -hmm. praise God. Be because so happy. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, what other reason would he allow this? And, and I remember her, her telling me like, there's gotta be a reason God doesn't do anything for no reason. Like you have to just not focus on all, all this negative. Like don't, don't get yourself down and, 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 and say, why God, why? Like, and think if it's all just terrible and God doesn't care. He does it for a reason. And so what I realized, and that's why I focus so much on what I learned from all of this is if, if, if I were to give somebody advice is just understanding that God doesn't allow things to happen for no reason. Um, it doesn't mean that you're being punished for anything. I never felt like I was being punished. You know, I, I know, I know without a shadow of the doubt that at least for us, he allowed this to happen to strengthen us because if we I can honestly say that if we hadn't gone through this, I would not have been able to start the church because starting the church was just so difficult. Mm. Um, and I, I know I've been repeating myself and over and over again, but when it comes to that, I realize like if we can go through this, then we can start a church no matter how difficult it is. And so I think my best advice would be not to always focus on the negatives. Like why God, why God, what, why don't we look at the good things that have come out of this? You know what? I remember when COVID started um, and we had a small group, um, and we, we decided, okay, we're not going to focus on the negatives of COVID. Let's think about positives. Well, we're spending more time with our family now, mm -hmm. right? Because we're in quarantine. Like there's, I know how difficult situations can be, but there's always something good that comes out of it. Yeah. Even if it's something small, mm -hmm. it's like, focus on that. Don't focus on the negative things because then you're, you'll dig yourself into a hole um, mm -hmm. and, and you'll fall or you'll be in this hole and you'll be sad and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to function. And that's why I feel like the grieving process, you have to have a balance between be sad that's fine. Go through it. There's nothing wrong with being sad that, that you have lost somebody, but also don't allow yourself to fall into this hole. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the miracle from, there's always a miracle in everything. And the miracle for me was that I did not fall into a depression. Mm -hmm. Not once I was sad about. And so for me, I thought the miracle was going to be that my child was healed. And that, that wasn't the miracle that happened. The miracle that happened was that I went through this without needing I don't know, was it Xanax? Any like, mm -hmm. like some depression? Medication. No, yeah. I was able to get through it. And that for me was a miracle that God helped me through it. And, and it was because I focused on the positives. Like I, I know my, my husband goes to a counselor and there's some um, word of advice he gave him once is that um, whenever something bad happens into your, in your life, it's not always, sometimes we feel like the whole world is falling apart, but it, that's usually not the case. Mm -hmm. you know so okay so I lost my my son but there's so many blessings that I have right now like mm -hmm. I said before I have two healthy kids I have a wonderful wonderful husband I'm a part of a great church I have a great family like and so count your blessings that's what mm -hmm. I would say you know uh, the opposite the the best word of advice I, if I can give someone who is like maybe falling into a depression is maybe you know and i'm not i'm not saying that if you're in depression and i mean you're not grateful i'm just giving a word of advice for someone who you know usually depression and grieving go hand mm -hmm. in hand um just think about the good things in your life and you think i don't have anything good going on in my life you have to have something good going you're alive like mm -hmm. you know you're healthy that's good focus on those things and so i think that would be my best word of advice is just to focus on the good things that are going on. Because usually when you're going through situations, it's in one area of your life. It's not everything, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I have a good job or, you know, I have a great family or whatever it is, even if it's something small, like focus on that. Don't, don't focus on the negatives. Um, and that way you won't fall into a depression because usually that happens when you just feel like the whole world is coming in and everything's falling apart.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, that's very true that you just said grieving and depression. Usually it is true. Like, because I thought for a second that you did go through a more like a depressed state in that. But so oh, you're yeah. saying that for you, it was something that you walked through. Yeah. But like you were able to to overcome yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because exactly. you're always looking at the positive. Like, yeah. so I don't have this or this happened to me, but I still have this and I still have. Yeah. And I still hold on to that. Yeah. Every time a situation comes up, it's like, okay, so what good? And we actually practice this with our kids because my son, I, I'm very, uh, I could be very negative though. Like, um, if <laughs> my husband is like, every time he walks into a situation, he's like, but this is great because I'm like, no, but there's, <laughs> there's like more realistic. This right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so like, okay, I'm so pessimistic. I'm like, the glass is half empty. It's not full right now. I want it to be full. And so my son, my oldest is like that. And so there's times when I have to sit him down and I have to be like, he, like he had plans like we we're supposed to go somewhere tomorrow we couldn't because it's raining well you know what it's raining like that's a good thing I mean I don't know the grass is gonna grow now. yeah like, <laughs> go put on your rain boots now you can play outside in the rain like whatever it is there's always something positive and so we do that with our kids all the time like let's count our blessings let's write down you know the great things that have come out of this and so that helps you not fall into that depression yeah. And how has that, your story and like what you've overcome helped others? Cause I know that through journey church and like, what have you seen like grow or victory in yeah. through that process? Whenever I was pregnant and we decided not to abort our son, um, we, uh, there was this woman who sent us a message because, um, during the whole process we had been blogging and posting about it. And she said, you know what? Um, I see how much you guys are fighting for your son. Um, and so, I'm pregnant and I guess she was pregnant by um, she already had a child from a different gentleman or something. I can't remember the exact story, but the point was that she really felt like I'm not going to, I'm going to end up having to raise this child by myself and I don't want to do that. So she was considering um, abortion. But when she saw how much we were fighting for our son's life and how much he was fighting for his life, she decided not to, Mm -hmm. and she had her daughter. And so then after that, she would send us pictures every year of her daughter who she says it you know she says it that if it wasn't for journey then her daughter wouldn't have life right now because it was journey's story that made her decide that she wanted to keep her child oh man there's just so many stories there's a gentleman in our church now that um works in our media department and he's been there since day one and throughout that whole process um when we were blogging um i guess he was feeling like he could he wasn't feeling god anymore and so our story just when he read it i guess he got emotional and he felt like a connection to god again through this story and now he he not only does he go to church he serves on our team and has been since we started the church he got baptized at our church um there's just so many stories of people who have come to us and told us like we you know because some a lot of people who lose people in their lives and they grieve, they usually see the process of people who their lives just fall apart. I mean, I actually met a woman um, locally here in Winter Park who lost her son and, and her, her husband left her. And it was just a lot. And I remember thinking, man, I just feel so bad for her because she didn't have someone to go through this with. And she actually started an organization for women who, mm. who lose their child to help connect them to other people to go through it together with them. And so, Mm -hmm. and she understand the importance of that too, because it's such a big deal to not go through it alone. And so I think that for us is such a big deal. Again, that's why we feel so passionate about the church is because whether it's that you're grieving the loss of a child or, or the loss of a relationship, or you're going through a divorce or whatever the situation is, whatever loss or, or whatever terrible situation is that you're going through, like, we are so about that at our church that we're able to come together and and walk through the situation with you Mm -hmm. and connect you to the God who can get you through it. And so Mm -hmm. I think there's just, Oh my God, so many stories. Like I said in the beginning, a gentleman who wanted to commit suicide. And I feel like all of this, like it it comes back down to like all of this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the fact that we went through it and we were able to go through it. Okay. And then we're able to start this church. And now this church is, able to help so many people's lives um 
so many people who have been touched either by his story or just by the church. Um, what's one last thing that you want to leave with people um, that are either going through it, that are maybe not seeing the hope? I mean, you gave some great insight from your story, but what's one last thing that you want to leave? Yeah, I think that um, if you're listening to this um, and you maybe don't even have a relationship with God, I feel like that is just like pivotal. That's number one. It's just get yourself connected to God. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, get yourself connected to a church that'll help you get yourself connected to God. I mean, I don't really know. Like, I feel like it's literally that simple. I know when you had asked me before about like, uh, how I felt or, or, or what, what was I thinking when we had our son that day, not knowing what was going to happen. It all goes back down to like, just trusting God, trust God that no matter what situation that you're going through, especially like, because of things that are happening with COVID or I lost my job or, or I lost my home or my car, or whatever loss that you have going on, trust that God has a plan. Um, something that JJ and I say all the time is if God closes a door or if he takes something away, um, it's usually because he obviously has a plan through it or if it's a loss, like a job or a situation like that, he's got something better for you. Mm. Um, just trust God. That's literally all I could say. It's so hard to trust him in the middle of everything that's been going on right now. It's like, God, why would you allow that? Just trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust that he's going to get you through whatever situation. Trust that he's got your best interest in, in mind. He's our heavenly father and a good father um, cares for their kids. And sometimes a good father takes away things. Um, and he does that to just make us stronger and prepare us for whatever he has for us in our future. So just trust him, get connected to him and trust him. So good. Thank you so much, Liz. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I got so much out of this and I know that, that someone listening to this will be blessed by your story. So thank you so much for being honest yeah. and vulnerable. Sure. Today. Um, where can people connect with you uh, if they want to follow you, follow your story or your church? Yeah. Yeah. So basically um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, journeyorl.com is our website. Journeyorl is our handle for Facebook and Instagram. We are also on YouTube. Um, YouTube is like going through the roof right now. And so you want to watch all the YouTube videos. If you have never heard about us, Journey Church in Winter Park, Florida, there's a lot of Journey Churches everywhere, but um, we are in Winter Park, Florida, and you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to follow me, I'm at Liz K. Vasquez on Instagram and Facebook. So it's L-I-Z-K-V-A-S-Q-U-E-Z. -E That's how you spell it. <laughs> awesome. We'd love to see you. Give a shout out if you started following us through this podcast. <laughs> Yes, the plug. The plug. I always yes. gotta do the plug. Thank no, you. but thank you so much, Liz. <laughs> and course. thank you for being a part of this. Sure. Love you, girl. Thank you for tuning in on today's episode. It was a great conversation with Liz. And honestly, if this episode makes you think of someone that might get something out of it, please share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. Leave a review on your thoughts of this podcast. And I will see you guys in the next episode. I hope you guys have a great week.